In this video I'm going to be making a mesh, a bone mesh. Somebody had asked me if I can show them how to do it. So this is design only. Here we are segmenting the, the bone. Make sure that you don't have too much noise. We're looking at a crisp outline of the actual bone. And then we're going to apply that and then we're going to view that. Click on that little icon on the left to bring that into your cube. Then with the scissors, select delete outside and let us clean up this segment. When that's done, I'm going to click the island and keep the largest island. Then let's add another segment. We can rename these. And then we're going to go to the, the Pano add-on. Click on Open Curve and draw a curve. And this is so that the slice can follow this curve. Select it, and here we go. It follows the curve perfectly. So with that being done, I will only view the green slice. Only work with the one green slice. And by doing that, I need to disable the other slices and only enable the green slice. And you'll see only that specific slice is moving. I find that sometimes easier to do. It's a bit less confusing. Then we're going to hide the other one that we get a good visual of the the CBCT scan and try and position this at a specific angle that you can view the nerve canal where it exits and along uh, along the bone. Once you've got a good visualization we're going to head over to the, the segment editor and then click on the tube Put down 1.5 more or less and then we're going to, to draw this tube and then right click to get out of it. So here unfortunately I didn't select the correct one. Make sure that the new segment is, is selected. Apply that. So we're going to do the same thing for the other side as well. Find yourself a good location. Here we've got the exit and we can see all the way across. Get yourself a tube, make a new seg segment and then outline it. And then I'm going to name it and then we're going to export this. Make sure that the RAS is selected. Find yourself a suitable folder that you can find these files. Choose that folder and export. Then we're going to head over to Blender and import these segments. So we've got a lot of mess going on on the top. We could have segmented this in 3D Slicer, which is probably easier and faster. So I'm just going to demonstrate how to, to do it. In. I'm going to get myself a vertex cutter, position the vertex vertices accordingly, click on Slice, and then apply this, accept that. And that should make two objects. Delete the other object. And we're going to do the same on the other side. I'm going to fast forward this. Then we would like to sculpt, smooth these, the model. We are always, always looking for a good mesh structure. 
so in case you wanted to print it that you don't have problems printing either note that there's a few other objects in the scene so in the model designer chooses the faces that you want to keep and then click on clean so this is now ready to make our no almost ready because we want to patch up a few things So in the in the guide module at the bottom where the the other tools are, there's a patch up tool. Simply outline your your hole and then click on the, the fill. This is very simple to use. So once we got that done, we're going to then offset the model. Go to the block height module, offset model. Now here I'm going to offset it a very, very little, 0 0.05, because we're not printing. We would be um, printing out of metal, so we we're looking at tighter tolerances. So now we're we're going to um, block it out. View the undercuts and then we're going to make a passive model. You don't have to work on the passive model, I guess, because these um, titanium meshes are a little bit flexible. In this video, however, I'm going to be using that as my, my fitting surface. So now what we're going to do is we're going to install another add-on, which is called B Surfaces. Seek it in your preference file, and then click the the box and save your preferences. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this target model. You don't really have to, but um, in this event I'll just call it target model. And I'm going to hide away all the other objects that I don't want to see on the scene. I'll only have that specific model on the scene. Then in the edit we will be able to see this add on B surfaces. Now select your model, initialize add B surface mesh, and we see the make sure the surfaces is selected while you're drawing. And keep in mind which way you're drawing. So here I'm, I'm drawing from the molar towards the anterior teeth, so from left to right. This is critically important. And space the lines out more or less like I'm doing now. So if you're turning around, make sure that you are drawing in the correct direction. Otherwise, this is not going to be working. And then click Add Surfaces. You'll notice we've got rows and columns, 5 and 1. So we can change that. So I'm going to go back and explain how this works. So we're going to click on 2. You can see there are more squares. If I click on 5, we have even more squares. Note that we do not want too many squares because we want to end up with holes going through this mesh. So let us set this to 3 or even to 2 and this is looking good. Then I'm going to add initialize add B surface mesh again, do exactly the same thing to the other side and add surfaces. So this is looking really good. In the preferences and the modify stack we can see what's going on and I'm going to change that modifier, the shrink wrap modifier, to um, near a surface point and above surface. We're going to add a wireframe to that. I'm going to set the thickness at you can set that to whatever you think you'll be able to print the titanium. So I've set it to 0 0.8 and then I'm going to set the offset at 0 0.4 to make it standing above the model. Now these are too square for my liking. We're going to add another surf, subsurface modifier and we're going to uh, click that on number 2. Notice that, that these borders are open 
click on that box boundary and deselect the even thickness. So that can cause havoc if you've got a very complicated mesh. If you wanted to change that, you can pull it, make sure the snap magnet is on and the proportional editing is on as well. And you can shift this accordingly. Now, if you wanted to add a, an abutment on top of that, you can easily do that as well. And that basically finishes it. This basically finishes the mesh. Now, you can apply the modifiers or you can simply export it as it is and then the modifiers will be applied automatically anyway.